Hello and welcome. My name is Dawson Church. I'm the author of several best-selling science books, including The Genie in Your Genes and Mind to Matter. I'm also involved with over 100 clinical trials over the last couple of decades, and I also have a training and certification program. I am so delighted you're here because we're going to be sharing time with a dear friend of mine whose name is Christy Whitman. Christy is a New York Times bestselling author. She's the author of several books, including her first book, Perfect Pictures, and her newest book, The Desire Factor. She also is an incredibly inspiring human being. And you'll see, as we welcome Christy, as we engage in dialogue, you'll see and feel the kind of shifts, mental, emotional, spiritual shifts we can all have. So let's welcome Christy Whitman. So I am incredibly excited to be sharing today, to be connecting with Christy, and to be connecting with everyone here and now. Please, as Christy and I are in dialogue with each other, feel free to post below, let us know what you're thinking, let us know what your questions are, and we love to connect with you as well in this dynamic forum. I gotta tell you, beforehand, Christy and I were chatting a little bit, and we were just exploring and, and focusing on the connection that we both have with higher power, with higher intelligence, and how this is really just giving structure and form to all our work. So we'll talk about work, we'll talk about career, we'll talk about what we do during the day in our day jobs. But just so you know that before we began here, Christy and I were just tuning into you, tuning into our higher powers, really focusing on that wonderful state we can be in when we're one with the all that is, one with the people we love, you, and then sharing from that place together. So, uh, Christy, I'm just so delighted to see what you've been doing in that way and connecting with you today. Well, I am so grateful to be with you. I was getting teared up because I have so much gratitude for you, and I'm so grateful that you are my friend. And every time you're just one of those people that the minute I connect with you, whether it's live or even on Zoom, you just radiate such a high vibration that I just feel even more happy in your presence. So <laughs> I'm I'm grateful for lights like you, Dawson. <laughs> and it's wonderful. We can inspire each other, and I'm so aware of how we're part of a larger sphere of consciousness that. You know, when I when I connect with with you, when I connect with Donna Eden, when I connect with Bruce Lipton, when I connect with people who are at that level, Joe Dispenza, Marion Williamson, I mean, we, we're aware that we're part of this whole cycle of consciousness, this whole sphere of awareness, and it really is at this amazing level. And you you do that deliberately and do that before you see a client, before you do your work. And suddenly everything you're doing on the outer plane is transformed by that gratitude, that 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 positive emotion, that positive vibration. So <laughs> it's it's so true. I mean, when you think about it as human beings, we all day, every day we drink, we, you know, we refresh ourselves. We take care of the 3D suit that we're in, right? We have to eliminate, we have to eat, we have to sleep, but no one really talks about when we're younger that we need to connect with our energy, which is our divine self, and that we need to master our energy because really that's all we can is our own consciousness and that our consciousness literally is the out picturing of what we see in our reality. You know, some would call that law of attraction, right? But it's, it's the basis of how we create. And so when we are in, in, on a daily consistent basis, connecting with some call it higher power, some call it, call it energy. You know, you can choose, you could say, I want to connect with the rays of joy today, whatever that, that aspect of you that you feel risen up by right? It's like you, you feel more inspired and you feel more on purpose and passionate and you just feel so good and expanded. Like we, we can connect with that all day, every day, at least start out a couple times a day, making that as a habit and taking how we take care of our physical self, because it's, it's equally as important because everything is energy and all forms are created from energy, right? Yeah. 
And when that's the first thing you do every day, you also establish your priorities. You're saying to the universe, you're saying to your mind, you're saying, that's my priority. I connect there first. I don't go and connect with my phone, with the news, with Facebook, with social media. I don't go there first because there's not going to be a lot of inspiration or wisdom or transcendence to be found there. And so when you, the very first act of the day is you condition your consciousness by that connection, then suddenly you're downloading all of that wisdom, that compassion, that love, that energy, that, that insight, and then that becomes your outer reality that you manifest. Yes. I mean, you know, when you think about it, all of us have been given free will and choice. And with that free will and choice, nothing is asserted into our experience. It's everything is attracted. And we always have a choice in how we think, what we say, what we perceive, how we feel, and the behaviors or actions that we take. And when we are choosing, like you're saying, first thing in the morning, it's like you awake and you realize, okay, I have another day. How many of us just go, oh, and then they start running into the day. And then, and then we start the lack. I don't have enough time. I don't have enough coffee. I didn't, you know, it, <laughs> right? The, it, the, coffee the, deficit, the time deficit, the attention deficit, the money deficit, the love deficit. It starts, the wheel starts and that hamster start, you know, that, that hamster just starts running. And so if you could have that, okay, I have, I have, a, I'm alive. I have another day. I get to create this day just taking that pocket of moment to just before you run out off out of your bed, sit in your bed for just a minute and go, okay, let me breathe. Oh, I get to breathe today. What's the energy I want to feel within myself? What, what is the energy I want to connect with my divine with today? You know, like bring in the energy. And then once you're feeling the energy, then like the, the fun parts of our humanness, the visualization, the mind kicks in and goes, Ooh, that would be fun. And that would be experience, you know? Right. And then we get the feeling states. And now we're like magnets attracting more good things to us. I'm so aware, too, of how we then condition the space of the people around us. I know my family members, team members, people I meet and see. And then when you have clients as well, there's a beautiful um, image I remember from an early book I read on energy healing of a client and a healer. And then their energy fields actually mixing and mingling. And then the field of the client is conditioned by the field of the healer. And in fact, in one really cool uh, study, HeartMath Institute did a series of studies. The first one was with, with, was with, with Rick Le Leskovitz. And Rick is a Harvard psychiatrist. And what they did was they had Rick facing a blank wall and then they had other people in the room behind him, but the Rick couldn't see them. And these people were entering a state of deep heart coherence. And when they did that, Rick entered that state of heart coherence as well without even trying. And when they dropped out of heart coherence, then Rick did as well. They then repeated the study. They did, did it double blind. They did it, they did it placebo controlled. They did a whole bunch of developments of that original study. But the, the idea is that we are literally conditioning the people around us. And so when they're in our presence, when they're doing a session with somebody you've trained, somebody I've trained, when those clients come to us, we're, they're, they're entering our space. And then those fields, those fields of awareness, those fields of the body and the mind of the client start to get entrained to that of the healer. So that's why as people in this profession, if you're a coach, if you're in any kind of healing capacity, it's so important to do this first thing in the morning to, to be hooked up that way, because then every person who comes to you, you're able to help them and train to that same signal. That is brilliantly said, Dawson. That is, I mean, as as a coach, because um, I, you know, my roots are coach. Right now, I'm channeling, and that's mainly what I'm doing. I'm writing, and everything I'm doing is with Christy and the Council now. But back in a few days, just a few years ago, when I was coach, right, I, I had to for my clients and for myself align myself and center myself and do that inner work. And be aware of, you know, where am I off and where am I, what am I doing when I feel good? And to have awareness of when, you know, in whose presence don't I feel good and why, right? Not blaming them. Oh, it's because they're negative, right? But looking within me, why is it that my energy dips? Do I need to pump up my energy more? Or is it someone that I just, 
need to maybe not be around, you know, like we get to decipher these things by checking out is my boundaries, boundaries being crossed. Do I need to speak up and, you know, speak for myself from the, from the eye asking for what I want. Cause I get to desire those things. Right. It, when, when we are in that alignment, then, then everything falls into place. Christy, I want to ask you about your writing and your speaking. And, you know, when I read your books, you are so incredibly clear. It's like, if you want absolute clarity of thought and expression, it's it just like, I, I read your books and I just like, I, I, I marvel at just how clear you are. Thank you. Where do you get Wait, that? Wait, pa pause. <laughs> that is like the most amazing compliment as a, as a, first of all, as your friend, thank you. But just from an author to an author and how, you know, who you are in this industry and all that, you know, Dawson, I mean, I, I am, I'm just honored. And I just wanted to pause and take that in because I, that's just one of the best compliments I've ever had. So I sent you a random email about it two, three months ago. I just, I just happened to pick up your last book and I was just reading one, one, one section of it, just, just for, you know, for no apparent conscious reason. I just emailed you out of the blue saying, Christy, the way you describe this is so beautiful. So <laughs> I, I remember that, but still right here and telling me that it's like, oh, it just takes, you know, takes me back. So thank you. So thank you. Um, you know, it's, it's definitely a process. And, and this one is, it's a first channeled experience. Like all my books have been like that, where the information, it, it's like, I have a commitment to just have a pen and a piece of paper, like a pad of paper with me at all times, because it's just coming. And there'll be moments when, and you know, my children, my husband, where I'll have to say to them, I've got it coming down. So if you see me grab my pen and paper, right. Don't mommy, mommy me, or ask me where, you know, who took, a, did who fed the dog? Cause I'm, I'm in trains at that point. And so I just allow myself and I give them, you know, they, they opt, she's got her pad, ask her later. So I've given that, you know, that space to myself to have that. And once I feel like it's all down, like I'm it, like, it's all just downloaded. Then I start to, cause it's all written. I then put it in a word document and I start writing it out. And that's when I actually start writing. If, if they said to share about this particular story that goes with this particular concept, I'll then write out the story while I do it on the, you know, and then I have an editor that helps me with it, but it's, this was, it's all higher wisdom. It's not mine. I remember the Dawson, I remember the very first time when I became an author and I entered into this world, right? I had been doing energy work and law of attraction and healing work for about five years on myself. And I was in what the midst of one of those growth periods where I had, it was, it was a cool time where I really had the realization that of understanding the difference between lack and abundance. And one of those moments was I was never going to be satisfied with myself because I was always looking for what was wrong and bad. And then I had these perfect pictures, right? And so that was like this huge growth period. And I went to bed that night doing my meditation and I was shown a picture, a cover of a book that said perfect pictures by Christy Whitman. And I went, okay, well, that's, that's a nice little visual, right? And go to bed and at 1.05 in the morning, I had a voice and this voice was inside my head, but outside my head, it wasn't me thinking and it wouldn't stop. And I was hearing it. I was like, I need that information for what I'm now realizing about these perfect pictures. And so I got up just because I was so curious and I'm like, Hey, that's good information. That'll help me. And I just started writing and writing. And that's when my hand just went automatic and I couldn't keep up with it. The, with what I was writing, it was just go, my hand was going so fast and it happened seven nights in a row. And when I was reading the points and the things that, you know, they were having me scribe through my hand, it, it helped me. And it was an awareness that I needed in that moment. And then it just became, it morphed itself into a book. And because of that, I started speaking and then people all started asking me to coach. And that's how everything started. But the process has always been the same. It's like, they'll wake me up whenever they feel like it. 
quantum success was conceived at three o'clock in the morning in the middle of the Mediterranean. <laughs> middle of the Mediterranean. We're in a family suite. I got my husband next to me. I've got one kid out in the family room. I got another one in the, and I'm like, where do I go? So I pick up my journal, and my pen, and I go into the bathroom and I stacked up a bunch of towels because it was a cold floor. And there just I was in there for hours on that floor just writing and I lit it's like this <laughs> just let it let it go so that's the process now we were talking earlier and we were just sharing how the big variable here is that we're showing up and it's not that for you know, if you're listening to this and saying, well, where's my inspiration? Where's my getting that that bolt of wisdom at 3 a.m.? Um, the answer really is you showing up. And there's a wonderful old Sufi saying, thousands of years old. It says that um, the the gods descend to the human realm every morning, and their arms are full of gifts and blessings. They descend at 4 a.m. and then they return to heaven at 6 a.m with their arms still full of blessings because nobody's been awake and taken them up on the gifts they're bringing. And the, the, very, the idea that, that that Sufi idea is that we have to be showing up. We have to be there. We have to, you know, when, when you get that bolt of inspiration, you take action, you act on it, you're receptive. And you also set yourself up and predispose yourself to those inspirational moments by consciously creating room in your awareness for them. And, you know, Christy, it's interesting how pe people say to me sometimes in workshops, they'll say, well, you know, I, I got that impulse and then I just didn't do anything with it for a while. I have one friend who shall remain nameless. She's a dear friend. She runs a pretty big organization along with her husband. And um, she was saying, yeah, you know, when I retire, I'm going to write this children's book. I've, I've already written the first paragraph of this children's book. And I said to her, and how long ago did you write the first paragraph of the children's book? She said, oh, about 15 years ago. And I thought, ah, oh, you wrote the first paragraph 15 years ago, and then you had this myth ringing in your head for the last decade and a half that I have to retire before I can write the second paragraph. Right. <laughs> show up, you know, show up, be available. When those gods of muses are showing up for you, be there for them. And then you receive, you download, you start to make this magic in the world around you. So the variable isn't the blessing flowing to you. The blessing is, the, the variable is you showing up to receive the blessing that is already flowing to you all the time. That, that, that you couldn't have said it better. It's always, it's always there, but we're the ones that have to tune into it. We're the ones that have to get into the receiving mode. And a lot of people don't know how to do that. They, a lot of people don't know how to surrender and let go of energy that they no longer need. They don't, they don't, aren't even aware. Like it, it, my biggest thing for years was thinking I was feeling good when I really was feeling angry and not realizing that I was angry underneath the thinking positively, right? I was still seething inside. I was angry. I was resentful. And as soon as I was letting all that energy go and I became more and more aware of it, I, as I tune into it, it's always there. And the brilliant thing about the perspective of lack is that whenever you have any type of unwanted anything, any wanted experience, circumstance, contrast of any kind, you could ask yourself, what, what is it that I want? Because if I'm, if I'm upset right now, because I, for example, have lack of support, well, what I want is support. Well, the energy of support, the fulfillment to be fulfilled in support that's available now as energy and then what happens is because you're like this energy receiver and you're expanding in your energy field you're now very easily it doesn't take as much work as when you try to be positive and you do the affirmations and you know the stuff that you have to do in the beginning sometimes but it becomes just a natural way of being and it becomes the way you are and then you start continuing to attract more people that you resonate with at that level. Uh, that's, I, I've, I've been saying this for years, the best reward, I would say the two best rewards besides all the amazing vacations and the houses I've lived in and all of the fun experiences and all the fun shoes and purses and all the, you know, <laughs> all of it, all of it. 
my two best things that I have manifested in my life for raising and committing to raising my vibration and staying connected to light is number one, my intimate family, my husband and my two boys, because I didn't grow up in a family like this. And I'm so grateful that my boys get to grow up in a, a family where parents actually love each other and show love and respect and consciousness and kindness and communication and all that. Right. So that's like, Oh, I'm so grateful that I have this and that they're growing up in that. And the other is the people that I get to connect with that. I get to have conversations. I get to have coffee with, sometimes I get to do spa stuff with, you know, the, 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 the amazing experiences with really cool people being at T you know, being at TLC. I remember one time being in you were there, we were being in a vineyard and I, and I happened to sit down with Lisa Gar, and we're sitting at this table and John Gray is talking about orgasms, you know, at the middle of dinner. <laughs> and I'm like, this is dinner conversation. All right. Okay. Let's do this. <laughs> and, you know, people hear about things like sitting down with John Gray and Lisa Gar, and they think, well, well, if only I was with John Gray and Lisa Gar. But it doesn't work that way. The way it works is you, first of all, raise your vibration. That's number one. And you were emphasizing that's the, that's the first thing you do. And so you have that vibration. And then you naturally start to attract and interact with different kinds of people. And then even the people you interact with who have mixed vibrations, you're going to call forth their highest vibration. I'm really aware when I'm with, with somebody who's maybe, maybe struggling and maybe having some really heavy stuff going on, especially during the pandemic. When you have the pandemic, uh, when it first hit, I was I was kind of shocked actually, Christy, because I, I I ran some really big Zoom teleconferences for our community, and um, these people who were joining me for those co teleconferences were were really su struggling, yeah. and um, it was surprised to me because um, they're meditators for the most part, they're tappers, they're doing EFT, and they're really struggling, and so what I began each teleconference by by doing was I let them express their worst fears. And their worst fears were dark. Like one woman said, I'm, I live alone. I'm afraid I'm gonna die in my apartment and my body won't be found for six weeks. Uh, my mother is 92 years old. I'm afraid I'm gonna pick up COVID and give it to her inadvertently. I'm afraid my whole family's gonna die. I'm afraid I'll pass it to my kids. I'm afraid that the economy is gonna collapse and I'll be caught up in, in that. And I mean, that we express all these fears. And so what I, what I began to really have to do is um, move to where they are and you you sit there with people and you listen and you let them be in that space of course we're tapping all the time too so we're discharging all the emotional energy behind it and then i was so delighted because within just a short while we were starting to move up, up the vibrational scale by the end of the hour they were saying things like I can't believe I posted that stupid thing about dying alone in my apartment and my body not being found for six weeks. What, is, what a crazy idea. Where did that come from? You know, so now they've been with us and we're able to maintain that vibration. That becomes something to which their higher vibration can orient. And now you're bringing the whole conversation up. So it's not like you're, you're saying to people who are, you know, people of different political parties, for example. Um, I, I've been meditating, bringing into my, um, I'll, I will name a name here, into my meditations. I've been bringing a congressman named Clay Higgins from Louisiana. And he's the guy who said he would wanted to shoot Black Lives Matter protesters. Now that that is a very difficult vibration for me to in any even even think exists in the world and not and not start to hyperventilate. Okay, but but but, but that means that's my work right now. I need to be able to to send love and compassion to Clay Higgins. Stay up here, and I don't I'll ever meet the the congressman from Louisiana. But again, wherever people are, even if the people who profoundly disagree with you or who are disturbed. Or, or, or psychotic or so out of themselves that they aren't able to really connect to, to those, those, those levels, you just stay there because that is who you are. That's who you've trained yourself to be. And then you're with the suffering of the world and you then invite it up to move to that level. You find what is of that level in that suffering. And then as you create this space for your clients, for your loved ones, then, then you raise yourself self up. So I love what you're saying about you know, close family being essential to that. You 
being essential to that, these sources of support and love and wisdom and gratitude we have in our non-local sources of wisdom and inspiration are part of that. So when you're in that realm, you then become this, this, this beacon in the world that, and you're able to navigate a world which is suffering and is chaotic, and you stay at that high vibrational level, and then everything happens around you. So you don't have to know all those fabulous people to begin with. As you are one of those fabulous people, as you attune to those vibrations, you find all kinds of things, including the people around you, start to shift. You, you know, I want to say that brilliantly said, and I, I want to say this, just that when you are a conduit for light, right? So for example, uh, a couple of weeks ago, heard about what was happening in Afghanistan, and I could feel my heart breaking. Right. So, how do you stay? How do you stay in a high vibration when you can literally feel like oh, the suffering? Right. And what the council immediately guided me to do was to feel the angst that I was feeling, to process the emotions out that I was feeling, to allow myself to feel compassion for the emotions that I was feeling and then bring in a higher light. And then I was able to, cause I was like, what do I do? How can I help? How, how can I influence when I have not, no connection there? And they were like, but you do, you have light connection. And so even when we think we can't influence something or change something or be a part of a change, whether it's global, you know, with hurricanes and fires or it's, you know, a COVID vaccine or whatever it may be, when you can add light to it, when you can continue to literally transmute light to it, first in your mind, because our minds are so incredibly powerful, you know, thinking about the people that are suffering, but not going to that suffering level, rising up so that you're connected first so that you can then be the influencer of a higher energy. And feeling what they what the council said to you about feeling that first, so you don't just try to pop up there because that's dissociation, that's escapism, and we had yes. plenty of that in the Middle Ages where people just go to a monastery, go to a convent, wall themselves up, and have a good time for the rest of their lives. We are in the world, and you 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 feel that suffering, and you feel it in yourself as well. I mean, part of you is is that, so you 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 feel that, and then you also make room for that elevated perspective, and then you start to breathe, and then everything starts to shift. I was, I was teaching at Omega Institute because um, they, they reopened, and after the pandemic, they reopened, and I was one of the first teachers to go there in person, and I did a uh, meditation weekend, that I did a week-long EFT workshop, and people then in the subsequent weekend, which was an energy medicine weekend, saying, you know, how do these things relate? Why are you teaching meditation? Why are you teaching EFT? And I, I never really thought about that before, but I walked over to the whiteboard, I drew a line on the board and the line was just being asymptomatic, having no symptoms, having no depression, no anxiety, no pain and so on. And so for years, psychology has tried to help us be asymptomatic. We don't need to be anxious or depressed. If I measure you on the back depression inventory or the anxiety inventory, and you have a score of 30 or 35, that means you're clinically depressed or anxious. And we want to bring you up to zero where if you fill out those questionnaires and you score zero on PTSD, you score zero on anxiety, zero on depression. Isn't that wonderful? You're now zero for everything. You have no symptoms, no pain. Isn't that great? And the answer is, well, actually, no, because above that baseline, that's just the plane. That's just the, the basics of being human and not being in pain, not being anxious and depressed. And when we have those parts of ourselves that are, and there is the pain there, there is the trauma there, we have to go heal it. And so that's why I teach EFT, because EFT is this fabulous tool for getting down there and you feel your feelings. When, when, when Clay Higgins said that, or when you had, had felt those feelings, then you're going down below baseline. And, and th those feelings are uncomfortable, or like the anger you have to let yourself feel initially. And then you start to do things that bring you up to that, that ground level, and then meditation, connection with the infinite, non-local mind, higher consciousness, raising your vibration, then you go to the peak. And you can't easily get to the peak 
without excavating and going down into the, the trauma as well and healing that first, because there are so many leaders and, and teachers who've gone, gone to the peak. I mean, we, we, there have been all these scandals recently, and scandals in Buddhism and Hinduism and Christianity are these wonderful elevated teachers, and they're at the peak, but they have an ill trauma. The trauma is still festering there. It shows up as the dark side. It shows up as sexual molestation. It shows up as financial manipulation. It shows up as a huge gap in, in ethics. And so you absolutely have to, when you, when, when the first thing you said earlier was, I had to go down and feel. And we have to go down and feel. There is no short circuiting that process. There's no going up to the mountaintop and escaping it all. <laughs> and you know what's and you know what's crazy what i realized is that for years i tried to push it down try to push it down you know how much yeah. energy and effort of pushing <laughs> it down and denying it when it actually takes 90 seconds to process an emotion yeah, yeah. it's like it's that easy i i mean now i'm i don't care where i don't if i'm driving in my car i did it once at a pat benatar concert I don't think you heard that story, Dawson. No. My, I was, uh, I intended to get a uh, guitar pick from Neil Giraldo, who is Pat Benatar's uh, husband and um, lead guitarist. They've been together 40 years and, you know, they're just still amazing. So my, hus my husband and my two boys were in the front row because, you know, I like to be in the front row. So why not? And it was fun. And so here he comes, he's coming over to me and he's playing the guitar and they're playing one of my favorite songs, hit me with your best shot. And he throws the pick, but it goes beyond this barrier and he sees that I didn't get it. And so he's going to throw me another pick. So he goes to throw me another pick and my husband being the nice sweet guy that he is, he decides he's going to reach out for the pick and punch me in the eye, but he got the pick, right? So I'm like, I can't see. <laughs> and then, and then what the worst part about it is all of a sudden I can't see with this eye and I'm seeing this pick go across me over to a person next to us that we don't even know. And I'm like, what are you doing? He, took, he gave away my pick, right? So in that moment, I had a choice because I'm like, I'm mad. Why'd you punch me? <laughs> I know it was an accident, but this hurts. And he gave away my pick to someone we don't even know. So that's not a time to discuss things and have a conversation, but I was very angry. And so I allowed myself to feel the pulsation of the energy with the bass and the guitar and all that stuff was perfect at a concert and let all of that energy just release. And then I felt the compassion for myself for that moment. I'll figure out why he gave away my pick later. And then allowed myself to just come back to that moment. It, it was a two, three minute process. And I was right back there having fun, dancing with my husband. We had a conversation later after, but it was very calm because I wasn't feeling uh, angry. I was, it was done with it. And then I was curious. Okay. So I get the, I get the, I think, what was the deal with the take, giving that away? Right. And then we had a, a discussion, but a mature adult conversation that wasn't coming from trauma. And you're taking care of yourself, you're taking care of your, your marriage, you're taking care of the moment, all of those things. So powerful to have that skill. Yeah. 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 Because so many people are just reenacting their trauma. I was having a conversation earlier this week with a, a psychiatrist and we were just like really getting into how hard it is to budge those conditioned behaviors. People get conditioned by trauma early in the brain, early in, early in their lives in their brain. And these aren't formed as episodic memories in the prefrontal cortex or the neocortex. These are formed as neural circuits hardwired in the hippocampus and the learning centers of the brain. So they get these always conditioned beliefs going early in life that my needs don't matter, that the world is an unsafe place, yeah. that I don't deserve. And then they, they carry out those scripts completely unaware that they're even there in their in their brains and in their their, their neural wiring. And so th that trauma becomes embedded and then they don't even know it's there to address it. So it's incredibly powerful to have those tools that you have. As you're saying, it doesn't take long to shift. I, I was amazed when I first began to get reports back from, from therapists treating veterans and they'd be treating a veteran who maybe been suffering since Vietnam with an issue and they, tap with that, that veteran, they would work on that issue, that, that terrible memory with the veteran. And in five minutes, all the emotional intensity was just gone. So yeah. 
take care of ourselves, we can then take care of our families, our marriages, and have infinitely better lives. You know, it, it's interesting too, because we, we intend to take care of our families and everything, but we, we go outside to make sure we take care of them and we don't, we forget about ourselves. And it really needs to be flipped. I had an old mentor that would say, you need to give from the saucer, not the cup, right? So it's like, if I'm overflowing with energy and I'm not depleted and I feel like, hey, I don't have support. So let me bring in the energy of support. So now I'm feeling I'm coming from a place of abundance rather than the place of lack, right? I'm now fulfilled. I'm going to give more of that to my kids and to my husband. I'm going to be more open-hearted. If I'm depleted because all the energy I get in gets out, I give it away. I got nothing left to continue to give. What is your personal routine for building your energy? Say I have a low energy day. Uh, what do you personally do to, to shift? Well, first thing I do in the morning is I connect with that energy that I'm choosing for the day, right? And I make sure I, I've, I'm now 50 and I'm turning 51 in November. And as I have, you know, just started to realize my rhythm now, I like space in my day. I used to be, you know, eight until, da, 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 you know, and do, 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 and go, go, go. And, and now I need space because I need that sp space to literally just stop and just feel my energy flow. And it doesn't have to be long, but that is my go-to thing that I do all day, every day is, is I could be at a stop sign and just literally feel the energy flowing through me. I could be at the line at the grocery store and I, and I play with it sometimes. It's so much fun. I'll be staying there at the grocery store. And this, this happened to me the other day and I was like, so much fun. I was filling myself up with light and I was just expanding my aura. Nobody knew what I was doing. Right? <laughs> they don't know. But this woman in front of me all of a sudden turns around and she like looks at me and she's like, what did you just do? I was like, that's cool. You felt that. And, and so we got into this really cool conversation, right? Because most people won't, but like you're saying, as I'm sitting there at the grocery store, just exuding, it could be, I could be in a meeting somewhere or, you know, at a mall or wherever you are, you're exuding that energy. That energy is, is going to elevate and excel everybody else to a higher plane. Yeah, people around you can sense it and feel it. And then they're, of course, then inspired to resonate with that as well. And it's so powerful to do that. I know that I used to um, listen to the radio when I was in the car. And I, at a certain point, began to just turn it off and then just tune in and, and move my awareness to that meditative state. And then you feel shifts in your brain. One of the cool things that people who have been doing a lot of tapping and meditation have been telling me um, is that they feel stuff in the, inside their heads. And so I've been, I've been asking them where. And so like one young man, uh, I was, I was um, speaking in Paris in 2019. And um, this young man walked up to me after, afterwards, a big auditorium and everyone was leaving, but he walked up to me and said, you know, Dawson, I, I know you meditate a lot. I know Tony Robbins meditates a lot. I know Joe Dispenza meditates a lot. I know many of the people in this, this space do that. I have begun to do it myself now as well. He was a stock trader. He had a very, very high intensity job. He said, but I've, I've been now meditating for two hours every day and I'm feeling all these things inside my head. What does it mean? So I said to him, well, where are you feeling those things? And he, he, was, uh, he was Arab. He was from Saudi Arabia, just working in Paris. And so I asked him where in his head he was feeling these things. And he pointed over here. He said, right over here, and he pointed above his ear, and that's the temporal parietal junction of the brain. That is the part of the brain that has to do with locating you in time and space and quietening physical signals. So you're locating yourself in time and space, you're quietening the, all the signaling from your body down and you're giving yourself infinite space. When the parietal lobe shuts down, which it does in meditators who are really in deep state, then you lose all sense of space and, 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 and proprioception. And so you're literally drifting out there in the infinite. To that brain, the infinite is as real as any physical sensation. Another place people point to very often is they say right here, my third eye area, I feel this buzzing, tingling in my third eye. I know that I began to do that, that I began to do that about 30 years ago. I felt this buzzing, tingling in that, that area. Now I know that's the mid prefrontal cortex. That is the seat of our sense of self of being a human limited self. And so we find in meditators, 
and tapers, that mid prefrontal cortex gets really quiet. And now your proprioception is shut down. You have no sense of space, no sense of time. Your sense of self is offline. So you're nobody in no space drifting there with the cosmos, having floods of oxytocin and, and serotonin and dopamine going through your body and nandamide, the bliss molecule. And then you're in this amazing place. So when you were in line with that lady, I mean, she was able to feel that. And then it affects your electromagnetic field, extending about 15 feet away from your body, three meters away from your body. And then all the people in that field feel it. And then you're also starting to resonate with those parts of their field that are able to move that high vibration. And so- <laughs> It just feels good. <laughs> it just feels good, yeah. And that's what, where you wanna be and what you wanna share You're with- You're so brilliant. I just, I just love you. You're so brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, mean, I was thinking, we were talking, in fact, before we began about how 10, 20 years ago, this was all metaphysics and this is all woo-woo stuff. Now it's experimental psychology, it's MRI studies, it's EGs, it's, 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 it's epigenetic changes in the body, it's, it's hormones and neurotransmitters. I mean, I'm just so excited, Christy, that we used to think of this as being metaphysical. And now we know that it's certainly part of that, that consciousness of the of the infinite and it is absolutely physical it's affecting your body it's growing telomeres it's 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 dampening stress genes it's dieting down your cortisol it's upping your anandamide it's doing all these things inside your body which produce a far greater health and lifespan outcome than yes. we we knew was possible before so it's metaphysical yes. and it's physical on every level. Yes. It's just, it's amazing. And I'm just so grateful. I know this. I'm so grateful because I was not that I was not that then <laughs> and yeah. I'm so grateful. I know what I know. Cause I still see people that are, you know, like my parents, for example, they're 85 and 89 and they're, they still think in negative ways and they're still very much, they don't understand consciousness and tra trauma and energy mastery. They, they, and, and they live in the, the panic lifestyle that they're not safe and the world's going to end and everything is life and death. And it's, it's horrible. It, you know, it, it's, it's what a lot of people unfortunately live and it's time to wake up. And that's why, you know, it, it is time. It's time. It, it's time to wake up to our power on a deeper level and understand the, you know, we, we have a choice in that, even that, how we're going to feel. Yeah, it is. About half of my family taps and meditates, the other half doesn't. And so uh, it's, it's heartrending when people you love, you know, they can have so much better lives if they were just to take advantage of all the stuff. But also we feel, I, I feel that there are enough people who do resonate with what I'm saying and are, are doing the work. And then those who aren't, maybe it's not their time. Maybe they'll discover it later. Maybe it'll take some kind of real shift in the system to make them look at the, at the options. And so I console myself with just, just thinking, you know, I'll just work with people who are interested. Absolutely. Absolutely. Not here to convince anybody. Cause I know that for me that it works, right? So it's ener energy mastery is where it's at. And, and we are so uh, truly blessed to have all the tools that we have. Like you, you've mentioned tapping and meditation and, you know, just the different things that are out there now, because we have access to them through the internet and, you know, and having amazing teachers like yourself that are able to teach us how to connect into that higher space so that we're not just mired in 3d world is awesome. But when you get mired in it, you know, it's, it's not so fun. Yeah. And then teaching people the tools to extricate themselves. And, you know, what, what's, so, what's so nice for me is that those tools used to be metaphysical and the, um, the possession of, of a few people who really had either had the gifts or tr trained intensively. Now we have manuals. We have the EFT manual and everyone just gets trained on a standardized manual. And if you do it, like we had one person in our certification program and she was a classical violinist. And she had no experience in energy healing or in tapping or in any of the stuff. And she decided to get certified and join, join the certification program, retrain herself as uh, an EFT practitioner. And so we have a big Facebook group and most people interact in the Facebook group. And one day arrived finally at the end of her training where she had to do her first session with an actual client. 
and she was so nervous. It's like, I'm, I'm a classical violinist. You know, what, what do I know about this stuff? And I've learned all these, these cool techniques, but, you know, I mean, now I have to actually use them with somebody. And she was so nervous. And so later in the day, she posted in the Facebook group again. I went into the session. I just used the techniques and they worked. <laughs> yes, they do. Yes, they do. Yes. And, and, and if you're a coach, having more tools in your, your tool shed is absolutely essential because I, I want to just share a story from probably 15 years ago when I was coaching a woman, she too was a violinist and she would get horrible stage fright. And she was graduating from, we were living in Montreal at the time and she was um, at McGill University and she had to do this performance for her graduation. And she was terrified. I mean, she would literally get sick just thinking about it, getting on stage. And so I taught her tapping because I had for years, you know, I've been dabbling in stuff for 25 years, right? So I had that in my tool shed as a coach to be able to help her with that. And she was able to get on that stage and she was so centered and so eloquent. She graduated with flying colors, but now she is a classical violinist, <laughs> you know, and I've had a woman that was terrified of getting on a plane and had to take a, a trip for work to Australia and was terrified and tapped. And she was totally fine, both there and back. So these techniques work, these tools work. I'm, gra I'm grateful that you actually have a program that certifies, because I'm all about certification. You know, there, there's people like, like myself, right? I can use uh, tapping with people, but I'm not certified in it, right? But when you get certified in something, you learn the nitty gritties, you know, all the possible things and you go much deeper in what you can do, um, you know, as a coach. So do you want to tell them a little bit where they can find more information about your um, EFT uh, certification? Yeah, thank you for that, because we do train people systematically in these 48 EFT techniques, and they do work. You just apply them mechanically, and you find that they do work, and it is a standard approach. You just do these things, and there, there are forks. I mean, if you hit trauma, go this way. If you hit complex PTSD, go this way. If you hit buried memories that the person has no conscious recollection of, go this way. So there are all these, these tools to address each of those situations, which, which you'll find. And so it's called the Ultimate EFT Certification Program, and people can get more information using the link. And so go just go there, ultimateeftcertificationprogram.com, use the link, and you will see this remarkable thing that you can take in a series of steps and then tra retrain yourself. And then when you actually apply them with people, you'll you'll be amazed to see how they work. The other thing, cool thing, Christy, is that we've been studying now, not just how this works with our clients, we've been studying how this works with our practitioners. And so we have several studies now showing their levels of anxiety, depression, PTSD, pain, and so on. And their levels of all of those kinds of issues are dropping dramatically. We've even done studies of cortisol and it shows that people in one of our four day workshops, their level of cortisol drops an average of 37%. Wow. Their levels of antibodies, the antibodies that guard you against that, that line your mucous membranes in your body and that are the protective barrier against coronaviruses, those antibodies rise on average in a week of tapping meditation by 113%. So as your stress neurochemicals drop, your immune antibodies go up dramatically. And your body's kind of like that. If you, Stress grabs a lot of body resources. And when you reduce stress, all kinds of positive things like those antibodies go up. So uh, it's just amazing to study people in the certification program, study people doing EFT and seeing that this stuff really, really, really really works. Next thing we want to systematize, we're working now on some new program to systematize the whole process of moving to those self-transcendent states. And so uh, that's the next step, I think. You, want, you need to heal trauma, and then you heal trauma, you live at that baseline, and then where do you go? And that's where the whole human potential movement comes into play. And, and I just love seeing the potential that gets unlocked in people when all of those body resources, those mental resources, creativity, mental activity is no longer captured by trauma, then we can blossom and be the magnificent people we came here to be. 
that we were designed to be. Absolutely. Dawson, you're amazing. I'm so appreciative of you. And I, I love that you, you have real, like actual numbers. You can met, we can measure this now. Like you said, <laughs> it, it no longer is okay. Cause my family 25 years ago was like, she has lost her mind. Right now there's studies that prove it. Right. I mean, energy work is the fountain of youth. We just return back to our natural state of well-being and, and where our body wants to vibrate biochemically in all other ways, right? It is amazing to realize that we have the capacity. And you know, Christy, one of the things I, I was I wrote about many years ago was that we kind of have this brain, a lot of our brain is constructed to respond to threats. And so we have the amygdala, the hippocampus, the hypothalamus, and all these, all these structures in our brain focused on identifying threats and responding to them. And now in the absence of no threats, we don't have any more tigers marauding through our rose gardens. So we worry. It's all these imaginary threats that, that we drive ourselves crazy with. And I, I was very focused on our brain being like that. But now neural plasticity is showing us we can change our brains and that we have what I call in this brain, the enlightenment network. We have the enlightenment network. We have the attention circuit. And we have the self, the self-reflection control circuit. And we have the, the circuit that makes us compassionate. We can engage all of these circuits in the enlightenment network. And that's a big part of brain tissue. So that's where we go next. We, we move out of trauma. We then start to move into self-actualization, then self-transcendence. And um, I also am just thinking about you and me in the next 10, 20, 30 years. And you know, I know that you've had this profound shift in the last three years. And I know it's not the end. <laughs> yeah, I'm on a journey, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll I'm, I, I'm open. Like we were saying, right? I just keep leaning in. I, I know I trust light. I trust light and where it's going to lead me. So. And you surrender to that after a while and knows to lead you to the perfect place. So, Christy, thank you so much for sharing with us. I was so excited about connecting with you today. And I just, oh, I'm in my heart and connecting with you, connecting with everyone, so delighted and excited. And let's all live every day like this. <laughs> Agreed. Thank you, Dawson. Uh, love you, Christy. Love you too. Bye, uh, big man. Uh, Hi, feel that, feel the energy, feel the consciousness. Thank you with everyone. Thanks again.